Hello Libra! Welcome to your tarot reading here on Dove and Serpent Tarot. This is a timeless reading, which means whenever you happen to be watching this, this reading was meant to find you. Please hit the like button, leave a comment, and consider subscribing to the channel, especially if this reading resonates with you. This is going to be a general reading, so try to be open and receptive to whatever may come through during our time together. I am merely the messenger, and I ask you to connect directly with each of these cards and use your own intuition to take you beyond the details that I provide. And remember that the most important part of any tarot reading is you. And there's a, hmm, there's a Ten of Wands. I like that. That's good energy. It's very strong, very intense energy. Okay. We're going to put that into some context. And we have a Ten of Discs. Um, we're going to use our Dove and Serpent spread. And as I do this, I would also like to say that if there's anything that you need me to pray over or meditate upon or send positive energy toward, please let me know in the comments. Continuing now, finishing up the path of the serpent. Wow, these cards look pretty good. I think I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. Let's do a mystery card, bonus card, confirmation card. We're going to use the Rider Waite Smith. And this is the card that we're going to set aside over here. We'll put the frog on top. And we're not going to look at it until the very end. Okay. And hopefully at the end of the reading, that will tie everything together and give us the confirmation that we need. Okay, so looking around here, we've got some uh, Major Arcana, Major Arcana, and Major Arcana. This is an interesting configuration of Major Arcana because it creates a kind of perfect um, equilateral triangle right here, right? One, two, and then three up here. So I think that's very significant, and I like, I like when we see kind of shapes and symbols and patterns in the configuration of cards, not just in the cards themselves, but in where they're located. Okay, then we have the Ten of Wands, Ten of Discs, Ten of Cups over here. So that might be significant. Uh, then we've got a couple of court cards. And we've got some uh, fire up here. So there's quite a bit of fire going on right now. I think that's a good thing. The first card, though, was this Ten of Wands. You're someone who would really bend over backwards for someone. right? I feel that you would... Um, it's almost like giving the shirt off your back. You know, when you really care for someone, when there is um, someone very close to you that's in need or that is ailing or suffering or struggling, I think you're right there. I think that you would basically drop what you're doing to go help somebody, to be of assistance, to try to, um, you know, try to alleviate that pain, that suffering, that strife or struggle. Okay. Uh, you're very generous with your energy in that way. At least right now, I, you know, I, I think that you have you have periods of time where you could be quite selfish and you're focused on you and you you know how to say no to people, right? So that they don't they don't walk all over you or use you as a kind of doormat. But right now, your energy is focused on um, outward expression of being being presented, being of service, being of assistance to someone. Okay, it could be a fire sign person specifically maybe a Sagittarius in your life, okay? Um, I feel like you're extending this energy to them in some way. Now, the one thing that we don't see a lot of in this reading is air energy. No swords. We do have this fool. The fool is pure air, right? It's, it's the wind, basically. Right. It's just it, there's no direction. Um, there's no coherence. Really, there's no plan. There's no structure. There's no organization. It's just chaotic air every direction indiscriminately. Right. So this is representing uh, either our thoughts or how we are conveying our thoughts, how we're sharing information, communicating with someone, maybe this Sagittarius person. Um, I'm sure Sagittarius isn't going to resonate with everyone who's watching. So I do think that it's it's probably a fire sign um, and or a Sagittarius, right? Uh, and or there is an S name involved, okay? So any of those three options I'm getting from um, the other person that we're talking about, the person toward whom we're trying to offer some of this 
kind of spiritual fire, right? This, um, this support, this love, this care, um, but not in a passive kind of water idea. We have the water over here, Ten of Cups too. But with the Ten of Wands, this is an expression of your your active fire energy, trying to do something for them, trying to reach out, trying to raise them up, alleviate their pain and suffering, trying to connect. Um, it's, it's trying, right? It's effort in a direction, okay? So I feel like this is kind of your vibe right now, that there's something going on with this Sagittarius or generally a fire sign, maybe an S name, okay? And what I think is really happening with them is Related to this death card, now I don't want to jump to conclusions with the death card. Very literally, this could be someone that has transcended, someone that has um, moved on to uh, a higher plane, okay? And if this is the literal fact, you have my sincere condolences, and I'm very sorry for your loss. I don't think that's what this card means exactly, not literally. But if it does resonate with you that way, um, again, I'm very sorry for your loss. And this, uh, this kind of changes the, the dynamic of the reading for you a little bit, but um, I think everything is still true. I think that with this Ten of Wands energy, you're, still, you're trying to reach out. You're trying to um, connect with them, maybe, maybe repair something. You're trying to give of your essence and your energy and your spiritual force and fire, right? To somehow help this person, guide this person, or to heal or repair your relationship with that person, or to some way um, raise things out of this kind of, this state of suffering, or, or, or strife or struggle, okay? Um, beyond the literal meaning, though, I think that this is, this was the, the kind of abrupt ending to a relationship with someone, I think, this fire sign or Sagittarius or the S name. Um, I don't think it was anyone's fault. I think it was just something that kind of happened. Maybe there was a, just a chance event, uh, some, kind of a, some kind of a circumstance that led to the ending of your relationship with them, that led to the two of you kind of parting ways, going in different directions, uh, I don't think there was a big fight. I don't think there was any kind of, you know, argument. I don't think it was anyone's fault or wrongdoing. But I do feel like, I do feel like it was kind of a, 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 a tearful parting, right? There was a sadness involved here. And that's part of this Ten of Cups over here. It wasn't something that you walked away mad, thinking I'm done with them, you know, nor they you. It was kind of a sad parting. It was, for some reason, the two of you had to go separate directions, okay? And now, with this Ten of Wands energy and with the Ten of Discs and the Ten of Cups, uh, I feel like you're really trying to repair this relationship. We see a Four of Wands that's talking about kind of um, getting things reestablished. We see a Six of Wands that's about reconnecting. Right, that's about um, establishing this relationship and this bond again. And then we have that temperance or art card, which is showing the two of you kind of coming together again, um, reconciling your differences, right? And we see these earth energies, the 10 of discs and the knight of discs, showing that this is uh, a practical thing. This is something that is, it's looking to take place in the physical realm. Um, but we'll explore the other alternatives, especially if this is a literal, um, a literal departing of a soul from this plane. Okay, again, I, I truly hope it's not that. But if it is, you have my condolences, and we'll talk about that energy a little bit too, okay? But it's the uh, rather abrupt ending. And I feel like now you're trying to use all of your resources to repair this. Right to fix this, um, it's almost like you you will give the shirt off your back. You will give the the vital energy, the blood from your heart, uh, if you could help this person. There's nothing that you wouldn't kind of um, sacrifice, right? And with the ten of discs, too, it's the same idea. There's there's nothing um, too costly, you know. It, this is worth every penny if you could somehow fix this, right? 
if you could somehow reconcile with this person or alleviate this suffering between the two of you, right? To patch up this kind of, well, I think it's like an energetic connection, very deep spiritual connection with this person um, that has abruptly ended, but we're trying to regrow it, right? We're trying to nurture it kind of back. We're trying to reach out and we're trying to grow that way. We want them to grow this way and we meet in the middle and we connect again, right? So there's nothing you wouldn't do. There's nothing you wouldn't do spiritually or energetically or actively, right? You would sacrifice, um, you know, you would, you would go hungry and you would go sleepless and you would exhaust your physical, uh, spiritual body um, if you could do this. And you would use whatever resources you had available, right? Whatever actions you needed to take on the physical plane, whatever, whatever you had that you could sacrifice or devote to this cause, you would do it, you know? There's nothing that is, uh, there's nothing that is too valuable to you that you wouldn't give it up if you could fix this relationship, okay? And that just speaks to the, the depth of this connection. I don't know who this person was to you or is to you. I don't know if it's a, a romantic partner, if it is a sibling, a family member, if it's a best friend. Uh, it could be a coworker or something, but I do know that there is a very intense emotional connection there. Okay. Um, we're going to go to the Four of Wands just briefly. This card is fairly self-explanatory. This is about um, your your intention to reestablish the connection here, reestablish a functioning relationship, right? to get the dialogue going again, get the, the, the harmony and the, the resonance with this person back. This is you trying to kind of um, regrow the roots here. You know what I mean? After this abrupt ending, now, um, you know, we're trying to both at home in ourselves with the Knight of Discs or Pentacles here. With this card at the bottom, we're trying to fix ourselves. We're trying to get the soil kind of uh, tilled and get the nutrients back in and kind of heal things at home, right? So that we can be, um, we can be like a, a proper, um, a, a proper source for this relationship, right? A, a proper environment so that we can be ready to regrow this relationship, right? So we've got the earth down here. We have fire up top, but this fire also partakes of the earth element because it's a four, of wands, right? It's that fire energy brought down into the earth realm, right? So this is fire and earth together, okay? Which to me really could be talking about this other person if they're a fire sign, and it could represent you being the earth here, being the um, trying to be open and receptive to regrow this relationship, to have it really, to have them kind of come back into your life right? In, in a receptive kind of mode, like an earthly kind of energy, okay? But you have to fix things at home. So this night and also the night of discs is the fire of the earth. So a lot of fire and earth coming together here, okay? So what's manifesting? It's about bringing, I think, this other person. Now, they may not be a fire sign, right? They may not be a fire sign. Um, but I think, I think what we're the, the type of energy that we're, we're talking about here and that is kind of moving through your life right now is this very active fire energy, which, you know, could be this person getting further and further away. But you are working, you are extending your own fiery energy to kind of reach out after them and bring them back, right? To bring them back into your life. And now, again, I don't know why exactly they're not in your life right now. Um, but I do know that it was rather abrupt. And um, I do know that there is, there is nothing that you would not do to bring them back into your life. Okay. And I think this is what you're focused on. This is your conscious effort. This is your goal. This is what you are looking toward. Bringing that fire back down to earth. Right re-establishing a functional, working, practical, real, and for all intents and purposes, a real relationship with this person. Okay. 
And so I think that there is a lot of work that you need to do at home to prepare yourself, um, you know, to acknowledge and rectify any mistakes that you may have made. Um, not that, again, I don't think this is anyone's fault. I don't think anyone is responsible. I think it's just the way things happened. Um, but you can still take a look, uh, you know, in your own house and make sure things are in order, right? And then in the future, we have this Prince of Wands, which is the airy aspect of fiery, right? Air of fire. So this really is kind of... Um, it kind of represents Libra to me a little bit, because Libra is usually the, the fire of the air, right? Cardinal air. But this, we kind of have it inside out. This is the air of the fire, right? So I think that really you're trying to use the, well, maybe I should rephrase that. You're trying to avoid using um, certain aspects of your Libra nature, right? And that could be why there's the absence of the air here, um, because you know that this person doesn't respond to just kind of conventional means, right? Conventional communications or um, dialogue or, you know, you, you can't just have the kind of conversation that you would have with just any old person um, because you, you guys are existing on a kind of different level with each other, right? So it can't just be verbal communication. It can't just send the, a text, right? There's no just like standard messages, right? So the kind of the typical or traditional Libra energy is not what we need here. We need to kind of flip things inside out. And you need to reach out to this person on that energetic level, on that spiritual level, which I think is what you're doing, the Ten of Wands. Um, so that is kind of uh, really, really putting yourself inside out, you know, finding those, uh, those inner qualities of yourself that you can express in an open, in a kind of honest and vulnerable way that this person will connect with, right? Um, and again, I'm, I'm getting the, the feeling that they're a fire sign person. We have a lot of the fire here today. So I feel like they're a fire sign person. If not, they have a real fiery personality. So I'm sure that they have strong fire in their charts somewhere. And obviously, I don't know their astrological chart. I don't have their natal chart in front of me. Uh, nor do I have yours. So it could be that you have a lot of fire in your chart too. Okay? And it's that fire that we need to bring out. Right? We need to bring out that fire because for whatever reason, that's how we're going to connect with this person again. Right? And that's why, again, there's, why there's not the air. We can't just send them a text or have a conversation um, and think that we can use logic and reason to kind of negotiate. It's not a negotiation. Uh, there's an energetic connection that needs to happen here. So the way of communicating is um, not through a compromise or negotiation, not through a debate or any kind of convincing. It's communication through a, a more subtle, more deeper, more spiritual um, energy or fire, right? And... That brings us to the path of the serpent and this fool energy. Okay. Now the fool energy here, I mean, it, the fool is also the wise man, right? Wise person, not gender specific. The fool here is the idea that any attempt to kind of, you know, call this person up on the phone or, or FaceTime them and talk to them and express ourselves with words, um, is going to lead to chaos and confusion. We may end up just rambling and not making sense. It's going to be real scattered energy. The air energy goes in a million different directions, has no coherence, is not able to put together a thought. Okay. And this could be, um, for whatever reason, if this death card is literal, okay, which again, I, I really hope that it's not. Um, that would explain a lot of the absence of air because communicating between planes like that is only done through non-conventional means, right? It's not just your, your uh, typical, um, you know, you can't FaceTime anybody, you can't send a text, you can't call them up. Uh, we can use words, we can vocalize things, but the communication really is done from within, right? 
from within either either emotionally or or psychically um, but it's not done through the air right this kind of energy just dissipates and there's no coherence to it there's it's just like static okay it's just like static and in um, another sense your attempts at communicating with this person with you know by vocalizing or facetime or whatever may just lead to more confusion it may just be static that the two of you can't seem to communicate in that way the way you and i are communicating right it just it sounds like static no one can make sense of it for whatever reason it's it just is not working okay but this fool is also the wise person so the wise person is going to find a way to communicate if if using words or FaceTime or text messages isn't working this fool doesn't just give up this fool may change tactics a little bit the wind blows and blows and blows eventually it will find a little crack and it will penetrate into your house right into the building into the structure into the walls that are closing someone off so the wind is nothing if not persistent and the wind will ultimately penetrate into this situation. You will get through to them, but it may not be with, um, you know, the type of air energy that that we're used to, especially as a Libra. So we need to change tactics a little bit, and change our style, change the way in which we we communicate. Um, now the next card is this Ten of Cups, and this is in the environment. This is your greatest asset. This is what there is in abundance around you. There's a lot of this water energy. And it could be that with the water energy, you know, trying to trying to talk underwater doesn't really work. I don't know if you've tried that. Don't try it. But I'm pretty sure it doesn't work, right? Sound waves travel differently, I think, underwater, right? And that could be why... This fool is down here, if you look at the overhead, the fool is down here beneath all of this water. It's like trying to, trying to have a conversation underwater. Don't try it. But it doesn't work. You can't, you can't really hear. I mean, you can. It's muffled, kind of, right? So I think that's what's going on. I think that there's so much of this overwhelming emotion that it's, it's difficult to really formulate a thought and express it in the way that is well, coherent to the other person, right? Um, I think that you've tried. I think that we get perhaps so overwhelmed with emotion, we start to get choked up and maybe we can't even get the words out, right? Uh, maybe we try to send a text, but it's just all emojis. We don't, we don't even know what to say because anything that we say is not going to be adequate in describing how we feel or what we're, what we're trying to do, you know? But this abundance of water is also your greatest asset. It's also, it's literally what you have in abundance right now. And you've got so much of this compassion, so much spiritual uh, understanding, so much knowledge of self. With all of this water, you can't help but be reflective, right? This is really, it creates such a depth in you that maybe when this began, you didn't realize how much this person meant to you. But now you're starting to realize how deep this feeling really goes, right? What is the depth of this ocean of water here? I think you're starting to, you're starting to realize how deep it goes and how important this person is. And this is some of the motivation for the Ten of Wands and Discs, how you're willing to kind of give everything. You're willing to sacrifice everything. To bring this person back into your life. And, you know, I think that it's going to happen. Now, the tarot can't predict the future. And I'm certainly not going to tell you what is definitely going to happen. But with the next two cards here, it seems quite likely. First card is the Six of Wands. This is showing kind of the two of you uh, reaching towards each other. Right? This isn't just one energy reaching so far in one direction, kind of like the Ten of Wands. It's you really stretching your arm as far as it, as it can go. 
This is the two of you kind of meeting halfway. So I kind of feel like they are reaching toward you just as much as you're reaching toward them. Right? So ultimately, you're going to grasp hands, right? Um, because I think that the two of you have almost, uh, it's almost a twin flame kind of thing because the six of wands is the three of wands on one side, the three of wands on the other side. And it come, they come together and they overlap and they intermingle and the energy just, just connects. It's like, a, it's like a, a lock and a key, you know? Um, it's just, it's very similar spiritual energy between the two of you. Okay, you may have the same interests, same ideals, the same, um, the same sense of reality, the same kind of um, spiritual experiences or spiritual understanding. You know, I don't know what it is exactly, but there's a lot of, the threes are just overlapping with the two of you. So it is almost as if you kind of share one soul, but not in the sense that separately you're incomplete, no. I think that the two of you resonate and harmonize with each other so well and to such a degree that you're destined to kind of come together, right? And again, I'm not saying that you're incomplete on your own. That's not what I mean. Perhaps you are even more complete with this other person, right? Because I don't think that, uh, I don't personally believe that a soul can be incomplete. I think our soul is infinite and eternal and it is there, it is within us and around us, but it's with our kind of awareness and our conscious mind to recognize and open up those channels within ourselves to, to experience that, right? It's always there, but we don't always experience it, right? So it's sometimes... I think it could feel like we're incomplete, but I don't, I don't believe that we are at any time. Um, so anyway, that's not what I mean by saying that the two of you kind of have this, this overlap. You know, I just mean that the two of you have such resonance and harmony that it is, I think, uh, I think it's unavoidable that the two of you are going to come together, that you are meant to come together. The next card we see is the Art or Temperance card. And this is really literally showing the two coming together. This is showing the two as one. And this could be talking about your life together. This could be talking about the, the state of things after the two of you come together. Right? Uh, two individuals that uh, share this kind of spiritual energy, that have this, this kind of overlap, that share this harmony and resonance with each other. Um, this is, this is a union, but this isn't necessarily like a marriage or a sexual union, uh, a, ro a romantic thing. This is like, um, like literally finding your, uh, your, your soulmate, but in a non-romantic, not sexual way in, um, sense like finding, uh, finding a long lost like twin, you know? It's kind of a, a rejoining of these energies. And it may feel like a completion. It may feel like, you know, now I am whole again. Now I am complete. But I think this person just activates certain things in you, brings certain parts of your own soul to your awareness, makes you aware of how complete you are, and vice versa. Okay? So they, they do not complete you, but they help you to be aware of your fullness. Okay. I'm going to look at the mystery card. Uh, I'm very curious about that. As are you, I'm sure. Um, the frog did not tell me what the card is. I assure you. The frog has remained silent. I think it should be either some air energy or some nice refreshing water. That's what I would like to see here. No. We have a knight of wands. Um, fire on fire, more fire energy, always with the fire energy. What is up with the fire energy today? I think this is showing that, um, there is this doubling of the fire, right? So all of your fire energy reaching toward them, I think they're extending the same thing back to you. 
okay? This is a doubling, doubling of the fire. So in some ways, this is kind of showing, even though it is fire on fire, in some way it's implying water, okay? It's kind of a yin-yang thing. When fire gets too extreme, uh, the fire energy, it kind of becomes its opposite, right? It becomes water. And I think we have that kind of hint here, okay? It's not exactly happening, literally, but we're kind of hinted at the water with, this, with the knight or king of wands. So I think that this is kind of telling you not to go too hard with the fire, that you kind of go the negative route for the Ten of Wands, which is kind of burning yourself out, um, dissipating all of your fire, vital, spiritual energy, exhausting yourself, right? Physical exhaustion. Don't overextend your fire energy. Temper it with a little bit of water. And Ardor Temperance card, too, also hints at this. Um, be a little bit yielding so that you're not so busy going forward that you kind of rush right by this person who's coming in your direction, right? You're going so fast that you just pass each other by. You don't even realize, right? You got to slow down a little bit. Temper yourself with a little bit of water. Um, and then you'll see this person coming toward you, right? And the two of you will meet somewhere in the middle. Now, the implication of water here is also telling you to take care of yourself. And make sure that you rest and nourish your body, your mind, your soul, your heart. Um, and focus also on this night of discs. Pay attention to yourself in your house, in your, your life, your situation. Don't neglect your own needs. Don't neglect your own responsibilities. Make sure your house is in order too. Okay? But I really, I really feel like this, uh, this situation is going to come together, and it could be, um, it could be a meeting on uh, a higher plane, an inner plane. If this death card is literal, which I sincerely hope that it is not, okay. But if it is, I feel like you will, um, you will establish the communication and the relationship with this person that you're striving for, okay. But you have to know that they are also trying to communicate with you. Right. So rather than get lost in, well, rather to get lost in all the activity, rather than getting lost in all of the confusing air and static, let's slow down, let's yield, let's do a little earth and a little water uh, energy practice to be receptive and to prepare ourselves for that communication. And also we're making efforts to reach out, but we need to temper that. Uh, we're going to go ahead and do an extended reading. Libra, if you would like to join us, please click on the link that's right here. And you can have access to all of the uh, extended readings for all signs, all zodiac signs, not just Libra. I want to thank you so much for being here and for letting me read for you. Uh, I really hope that you'll come back and see me again soon.